What does Copenhagen have to offer? Well, today we are exploring this beautiful, lush, tropical island for the very first time. There is also an incredible party side to this island, so make sure you watch until the end of the video as we join tens of thousands of other travellers at our very first full moon party. Ready to start our day up nice and early to make the most and see what this island has to offer. We have about a 40 minute scooter ride until we get to our very first spot. We're just outside our accommodation. We're staying at the hometown resort here on the island. It is absolutely beautiful. And if you ever come into this island, I definitely recommend it. It's only like seven or eight rooms for the entire place. So it's really nice and intimate, nice and quiet. Definitely an amazing spot. So we've arrived and we've parked up. We heard about this hike called Bottle Beach Viewpoint through YouTubers Flora and Note. They showed us and it looked amazing. And I watched the YouTube video and on their hike they encountered a snake. So I am absolutely terrified, but we're gonna give it a go. Hopefully we don't die. I was afraid it was gonna be pretty hard to spot, but this is a very obvious entrance way, so fantastic. Okay, now remember Scotty, we're on the lookout for snakes. Snakes, snakes, snakes. It's really nice and cool so far in this walk because we came nice and early. I think if you came a bit later, you know, like after 10 or 11, you would have the sun absolutely beating down on you. Definitely get up early and get here like 8, 9 a.m. It's an incredibly well-maintained pathway here. I was expecting this to be a lot worse and more of a steeper incline from the start. Hello. We have met the gatekeeper. Beep, beep, buddy. Oh, oh he's oh. coming for the journey. Looks like the dogs join us. We've got our own tour guide up the hill. Come on, come on. No, don't leave us. So this is the point, one way goes to the beach and one way goes up towards the hike. I think we might be here or like close to it, it's starting to get very rocky and I've seen reviews that once you start climbing on the rocks, you just need to get over the rocks and you're there. If we are here already, I must say that is like the easiest hike I've ever done. Hold. <laughs> Squeeze. <sighs> Let's go. Okay, there's another arrow right in front of me on the rock, so I think the camera needs to go away so I can rock climb up here. After a pretty easy hike, we have arrived at this beautiful lookout spot. It is bloody hot, a little bit windy here. Haley's just scoping out to see if she's comfortable walking to the end. It is pretty dicey, I'm not gonna lie. We're a bit apprehensive because there's a bit of wind, it's narrow but it is stunning out here. You've got like a 180 degree view of the beach. Superb. This split looks super, super dodgy. It was quite easy to get to this point because there's a little path that goes around the rock so we could avoid the narrowness, but there's no more path, so we can't avoid the narrowness. I have to actually go up onto it now. This has probably been my most favorite hike and favorite viewpoint that I've ever done. And you know, the track's actually really easy and really nice, so it's a really nice walk to do. The views are incredible. I definitely recommend coming early. Just as we were leaving around 10 a.m., there were about 10 to 15 people that all turned up at the same time at the rock. We are pretty darn sweaty from that walk, so we're gonna jump on the scooter and find a nice spot to cool off. This is part of the Anatara Resort Hotel here on this beach island. We're about to find a nice spot in the shade. They have some stunning spots here, just right next to the beach. That one or this one? We'll go this one, it's more in the shade. We're at Thong Nai Pan Noi. I think I said that correct. 
It is a gorgeous flat little bay with no waves and you can even hire some toys. They've got kayaks, paddle boards and even this electric sort of knee board I've seen some people whizzing about on. There are plenty of resorts scattered along the beachfront here so if you're looking to soak up some luxury vibes here on Copenhagen I think this is one of the best beaches you could stay at if you just want to stay in a resort and not really do much else. This is such a perfect place for that. We've just stopped up under this little tree cover here. We're going to stop here for a little swim. There are no other people because behind me I think the resorts or these kind of rundown places have no one there. So all the open resorts are down at the southern end which have all like the um, which have all like the lounges and the beach bars and restaurants. So if you want a peaceful swim, come to the side and jump in like we are. It's so clean, so clear. Oh, it's beautiful and it's not too warm. It's like a little bit cool, nice and refreshing, but not too cold. Oh. Ah. Uh. Now that is the goods. <laughs> this is probably one of the best beaches in terms of like quality and then also just how quiet it is here. Koh Phangan is Thailand's fifth largest island and over 90% of this island is unspoiled lush tropical greenery. Near Thong Nai Pan Beach is a very cute little charming township They've got some really cute shops, boutiques, a 7-Eleven, pharmacies, restaurants, really everything you need. But it just has a really cute sort of rustic charming feel to it. We've made our way over to the Thongsala area for our bite to eat. We've found an amazing place called Pure Vegan, I think that's the name. Pure Vegan which serves obviously vegan food. So we'll go inside, grab some food and we'll show you what we get. The first dish that's arrived is the sweet potato and pesto gnocchi. Mm. Oh. oh man, so warm, so soft like butter. So I got the breakfast set which comes with a hearty serving of sweet potato, scrambled tofu and then vegan chilli. It all looks amazing and hearty. How good was that meal? We are stuffed. To the max. I think we're gonna head back to our accommodation, maybe have a little speed nap and we will see you later on for our next adventure. We have come to Amsterdam Bar. It is the most famous sunset spot on Koh Phang Yang, offering incredible views over the west coast. Now it is pretty centrally located. It's a short drive from the ferry terminal which is nice and easy. Bit of a hike up these steps, oh crap to get up here but hopefully well worth it with the view. Yeah it's beautiful this view is incredible. I just started looking they have a massive list of cocktails. All of your cocktail needs are here. It is a bit sunny here at the moment. Got these really comfy little things to just chill out. Got to take off your shoes and your flip flops. So all natural here, but honestly, it is such a good place to soak up the sun. Luckily, it's actually a bit windy today, so we're not roasting too much, but I think even like an hour we'll be pretty burnt to a crisp because I didn't put any sunscreen on. It is such a relaxed vibe up there. We definitely recommend coming here to catch a sunset. They sell drinks, lots of cocktails, fruit shakes. They have food and also some cannabis there if you're keen on that. We recommend coming around 5.30 or 5, just a little bit earlier to beat the crowds. As soon as it got to around quarter to six or around six, about 20 to 25 people all showed up. So you might lose out on those seats if you come a little bit later. We're about to make our way to Pantip Night Market. Now it looks quite busy out the front, so we've parked our scooter about 50 meters down the road. The market is a lot smaller than I was expecting, but in saying that, they still have a few of your classic items like rolled ice cream, fruit shakes. 
crepes, kebabs. Ooh, 80 baht for some pork belly. It's a nice small little piece as well. It has my name written all over it. Mmm. Oh, so soft. Could be a little bit warmer. It's probably been sitting out for a while, but it will still taste amazing. We're on the lookout for something for dinner. And I must say that this market is actually quite a westernized market. There's not a lot of noodles or curries, but in saying that it is surrounded by a food court that offers that sort of food. So there is a bit of variety between the food court and the market itself. Scott has spotted some traditional desserts behind me and we love trying traditional desserts, giving anything a go. We're getting a bit of a selection here of desserts. So this first one, some sort of coconut and I don't know what it is, like a, it's a dessert, so how bad can it really be? Oh, it's weird. Oh, it's so weird. It's like a hard jelly. What is that? Someone in the comments, please let us know what this is, what flavours they are. It's nice, but it's just this top jelly texture. It's just so, so weird in my mouth. So I have heard about these famous desserts, which are like pumpkins that have sugar on it. I think they caramelise it. I'm not too sure. I've just seen like random pictures on a few blogs saying you've got to give this a go. I finally found them. We've been in Thailand for several months now and I have not seen them anywhere until tonight. So here we go. Oh wow. Oh that's actually really good. It has a custard texture. It's super super sweet. I was a bit apprehensive just because I'm not a biggest pumpkin fan but Haley has sold me on it. Oh that's actually so good. Oh, it's like a, yeah, it's like a, a pumpkin was a candy and a dessert. It's so unhealthy, it's just so, it's pretty much just packed with sugar. It's just soft, it mounts. Oh, that's probably, I think that might be the surprise of the night. I just found a really nice like, kind of noodle dish which is 50 baht for a vegetable one with some really nice thin noodles. We're going to cook it right in front of us so nice and fresh as well. The flavour is really bland. You really need to put a bit of chilli and a bit of lime on it just to give it a bit more flavour. I see these donuts everywhere and I'm always so tempted, but tonight I finally gave in to temptation. Here we go. That is delicious. Can't go wrong with a donut. It was 30 baht. Damn good deal if you ask me. Delicious. Love the custard inside. What a monstrous first day that was, but we aren't done just yet. Tomorrow we are getting up bright and early because the next adventure is best visited on a low tide, which is sadly 6.30 a.m. So I guess we'll see you then. Day two, we are raring to go. It is 6.30 a.m. We've got about a half an hour scooter ride to the north side of the island for our first adventure for day two. Let's get it. Just parked up at Wang Sai Resort, just over there, and I think this is where we're supposed to park. And then we're gonna walk through to the lovely location we have in store. We've got the sun rising behind us, the weather is starting to part ways. It looks like it's gonna be a beauty of a day. I love some morning beach vibes. We've come so early that there's absolutely no one else here. Well, it's a bit of a windy day today. We are at our spot, which is just in front of me. We are the only ones here on the beach that are stupid enough to come this early in the morning. Anything for the YouTube content and just to make sure we don't have to worry about other people. Our morning hike has taken us here to Mayhead Beach and right behind me here is the infamous Komar, which you can access 
during the low tides. It just makes for marvelous photos, but right now it is hella windy. Haley's not enjoying it oh one my bit. Goodness, I feel like I'm in gale force winds, it's relentless. One thing we've noticed is it's actually quite like dirty in terms of lots of sticks and debris have washed up on the beach here. It's not the the nicest at low at the lowest tide, so low tide was about half an hour ago. So maybe come a little bit later so the water's a bit more like up, like you want it to be around like here-ish. Where right now it's super low and it just yeah, shows it's a bit eh at the moment. At the other end of the sandbar there is quite a bit of rubbish. I mean there is even a mattress for goodness sake. It is quite sad to see what could be a really beautiful beach just littered in rubbish. Don't come at low tide, that is our recommendation. Come later when the water is actually up, like we've seen other photos of when the water looks much nicer when the rocks are hidden. I think that's when you get the way better photos, so a bit sad but that's just life. After a relatively disappointing beach adventure, you know what will make us happy and that is some food. We've heard that there is a delicious cheap food court here on the island which has lots of variety. I think we will head back to our accommodation, wait for our tummies to get nice and hungry and then grab some food. We have just woken up from the most glorious nap and we've come to Koh Pang Yang food court. We've driven past this place quite a few times and they have lots of food stores and the prices look really good. So it looks like they've converted this like massive empty warehouse into this little kind of food court area but there's no air conditioning so just keeping that in mind it is a little bit hot today so it is quite hot in here but they have like lots of seating around lots of different little stores serving lots of different cuisines very chill vibe here my buffalo chicken wrap has arrived it was a 140 Thai bar, a little more on the pricier side. When I ordered it, it said red hot, so I thought it was going to be really spicy, but it's a good level of spice. That buffalo chicken is delicious. The chicken's nice and soft and tender. The salad's really fresh. I got the chicken penang curry for 80 baht. I have high hopes for this because it is my favorite curry. Mmm, oh yeah. A little bit spicy, so creamy. Oh, you just can't beat Penang curries. Time to change into our party clothes as we join the hordes of tourists for an unforgettable and wacky night dancing on the beach. If you happen to find yourself on this island during a full moon, expect to see thousands of tourists piling into Hardrin Beach for the infamous full moon party. We've just parked up and we're going to walk down to the beach now. Sounds quite busy, there are a lot of people out so I'm expecting good things. So we've just come down this alleyway and the ticket prices look like they've gone to 200 baht per person. They used to be 100 baht per person. It really feels like a festival. You have to line up and get some little wristbands which we're about to buy. 200. 200. Oh, 400 each. They're actually really nice wristbands. They're like proper rubber. They're not the cheap plastic ones or cheap uh, paper ones I'm used to. It's really quiet right now. We've we've turned up at about 7, 7 p.m. because we want to get some like painting done on us and check it out before it gets too super busy. Yeah, pretty. LED bands. Oh yeah. So beautiful. There are lots of shops selling full moon t-shirts and outfits so if you want a, a safety outfit that you don't mind getting paint on don't worry they've got lots of shops here. Hayley is eyeing up one of the paint on like artwork on her body so we've just found one right here we'll see how much it costs and I don't know what she's gonna get I might get something too I might get something I know you've got some dragons, you've got Superman, you've got some scary little gremlins. So her little artwork is going to take about 10 minutes and it costs 500 baht for like a full body of it. Pretty pricey but what do you expect, it's a bit of a tourist trap around this island at the moment, this type of event, you're going to pay some ridiculous stupid prizes but it's all part of the fun and it kind of gives the locals some money as well which is good. 
really good so far. I love that it glows in the dark too. What started off as just a few hippies partying on the beach back in the 80s has now turned into a global party attracting over 20,000 people every month. As the name might suggest, Full Moon Party is held once a month on the night of a full moon. It is a night full of craziness, drinking, fire shows, body paint and just lots of fun. I have been completely blown away by the setup here. There is so much and it's so cool. They've got inflatables, flags, fire shows. There are so many pop up bars along the beachfront as well selling buckets. We came here the other day and it was dead empty nothing and man they have really transformed it. They have some fire skipping just ahead of us, so we're going to go check that out and will I give it a go? I don't know if I have the balls, but we're going to watch some people try. people start arriving I think it reaches its peak around 10 o'clock or maybe midnight we want to start drinking and partying so we're gonna pop the camera away and enjoy the rest of our night so I think this is it for us feeling a little bit dusty today we got home around 3 a.m. but it was such an awesome night and I felt so safe at full moon party as well it's such an incredible setup really nice and clean well done with like the food the arts the shopping and just like and obviously the party atmosphere really cool I really just want to say I think it is a bit over dramatized online about it being unsafe or dodgy it really does feel very safe. So that is us for our exploration here of Copenhagen. There's been an amazing two days exploring this island. I would say you'd only need about four days in total to actually enjoy this entire island because there's not a huge amount to do, but still worth a great trip. As Copenhagen isn't an overly developed island, to make the most out of your trip, I recommend staying at a beachfront hotel if you can. Just be careful because not all of the beaches are swimmable. Some of them are a bit rocky and some of them have a bit of rubbish, so be careful in choosing which beach you stay at. Make sure you watch these other videos on screen if you're interested in seeing what other islands in Thailand are like. So don't sleep on that subscribe button, hit that bell. And say hi to us in the next video.